All right, you gotta see this. I just created a full 3D model of this college campus behind me here using nothing but a $200 drone and completely free software. And the best part, you can do this with pretty much any drone. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how you can do the same. Hey guys, Dylan Gorman here and welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know who I am, I've been a commercial drone pilot for over a decade, primarily focusing on drone mapping and 3D modeling, as well as creating videos here on YouTube to teach you how to use these tools and implement them into the real world. Now, before we hop into the field to create this 3D model, let me quickly explain what exactly it is we're doing and how this technology has come into play making it free and accessible for anyone to use. Traditionally, creating 3D models with drones was a very tedious process that usually required expensive equipment and software to produce these intricate models that I can guarantee you've seen out in the real world, whether it's video games, television, you name it. Now, while this is still true, there is a newer technology that actually came out a few years ago when all of this AI craze first started up and it's called Gaussian splatting. Before I explain Gaussian splatting, let me first explain the original way of creating these 3D models through a process called photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is basically the process of turning regular photos into precise 2D maps and 3D models. Instead of needing expensive laser scanners, you can capture a bunch of overlapping images, in this case with a drone, and then feed them into specialized software. This software analyzes those images, figures out where each photo is taken in 3D space, and then reconstructs the scene with accurate measurements. The result is a digital model that you can zoom into, measure, and analyze without ever stepping foot on that site. Gaussian splatting is like photogrammetry's futuristic cousin. It's all about turning a bunch of photos or video frames into realistic, explorable 3D scene. But instead of building the model from rigid meshes or polygons, it uses millions of tiny soft points called Gaussians. Think of each Gaussian as a little blob in 3D space that has color, transparency, and size. When you put enough of them together, they create a smooth, photorealistic reconstruction of whatever you scanned, be it trees, buildings, cars, even people, without the chunky, jaggedy look you sometimes get with the traditional 3D modeling method. What makes Gaussian splatting exciting is how fast it can be. Compared to some photogrammetry workflows that can take hours or sometimes even days to process, splatting can render a scene almost instantly once it's trained, letting you walk through it in real time. So how exactly are we gonna be making a 3D model with Gaussian splatting? Well, we're gonna be using a free web-based application called Polycam. There are a few limitations, but there is no payment required. It's entirely free to use. The best part is that this works with practically any drone that you have, so you don't really have to go and buy some specialized gear to make this work. Let's jump into the field so we can actually capture our data set, and then I'll meet you back here to show you exactly how we're gonna take that drone data and turn it into an incredible looking 3D model. So in order to really make this 3D model work with the free piece of software, there's a few crucial settings that you need to set up on your drone before you take flight. Now, given that we're gonna be shooting video rather than the typical photos for a photogrammetry 3D model, given that this is Gaussian splatting, we need to make sure that we're shooting one in the highest resolution possible and two with the highest frame rate as possible. So with this cheap drone that I'm using, the DJI Neo, we wanna set it into, well, the video mode. So here on DJI Fly app, I'm gonna go and switch this over to the video mode. Now, once we're switched over, I'm gonna click where it says res and FPS, and we can see that the maximum resolution that I can shoot in is 4K and 30 frames a second. Now, if you're using a drone that can shoot higher than 4K, maybe it's 5.1K or 6K, or maybe even it's 8K, shoot in the highest resolution possible. Because with the input that you give the free software, the more data in terms of the more resolution, the better. Now, the second thing is when we're actually flying is just to keep consistent movement at the subject that you're shooting at. We're about to do that, so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But second, given that we are using the free version of the software, we are only limited to a minute and 40 seconds of flight. So make sure you're flying around your subject as quickly as possible. The further away, the bigger the area that you'll be able to cover, the closer you are, the less area that you'll cover, and you actually have to move a little bit slower so that there's no motion blur. Because ultimately what's happening is it's looking at every single frame in the video to create that 3D model. So with that being said, we are ready to fly. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the drone up. And now that we're up in the air, what I'm gonna do is first get my drone positioned at a starting point. 
So, and I also want to tilt the gimbal down so that I can get as much area covered as possible. So since we're only flying for about a minute and 40 seconds, right, I don't have to mind too much in terms of the battery life of this drone, but with a bigger drone, you'll have more battery life. So something to also consider. Okay, now that I've got my starting point, I'm gonna go ahead and click record. And I'm just gonna pan the drone to the right. And we're gonna capture the entire front side of this building. When I get to the full right side of it, we'll pan around and do basically a full orbit so that we can get the proper 3D model that we want. Now your flying doesn't have to be super pretty. You just wanna make sure that you cover a full 360 degrees around the subject that you're shooting at. Okay, and once you've done your full orbit around, I did shoot a little over a minute and 40 seconds, so we will trim that out, and I'll show you how to do that. That way you can pretty much get the best parts of the video to upload into the free software. Um, we can go ahead and bring our drone back. And now we're ready to get this uploaded into the software and create our 3D model. Now that we returned from the field, before we actually generate our 3D Gaussian splat model, we first need to actually edit our video down to exactly a minute and 40 seconds. Reason being is with the free account and the free usage that you get with Polycam, you can only upload up to a minute and 40 seconds to generate your Gaussian splat. Now, if you want to pay for a premium account or a pro account, that time goes up to 30 minutes and I think up to like a 16 gigabyte file that you can upload for that. Think of it for if you're doing something like a 6K or 8K video and maybe you're flying around an entire city or maybe even inside a building, right? You actually can do a lot with this. But for this example here, we're just gonna be using that video, the 360 fly around from the college campus that we were just at. Now to keep on theme with the free software, we're gonna be using an application called CapCut. As you can see here on my screen, CapCut is a free video editor tool. You can actually do their online video editing, but I actually like having their desktop editor as it's just a little bit easier to use. And again, the best part is it's free. So if you actually end up getting into doing some video editing, well, guess what? Now you have a free application that you can do that. But once you have CapCut downloaded, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna be presented with this screen that we're looking at. All we're going to do is create a project and we'll now get into the actual video editing application here. So the first thing that we're going to do is just take the video file from the drone. I've actually already downloaded it and saved it here onto my computer. So here I'm just going to go and grab our actual file and there it is. Now we actually need to bring it into the editor timeline and we're going to make some adjustments to the entire video file itself. So all we'll do is we'll take this video file. We'll drag and just drop it here into the timeline. So as we can see, this video is two minutes and 46 seconds. We need to cut off about a minute and six seconds worth of video. Now, what's great about doing Gaussian splatting is you can actually input photo inputs as well, because really all it's doing from the video that we upload is looking at every single frame. Since all a video is, is a composition of a ton of frames in sequential order, so in this case, this was 4K 30 FPS, meaning 30 frames per second. So every single frame equates to one second of video, 30 frames per second. Very simple. With that, we can actually cut chunks out throughout the video. So areas that have a bunch of overlap, maybe we just cut out a bunch of chunks in some of those areas as we'll just get one full fly around because we want to create a full 3D model of the entire building, not just one side of it. So what I'll do is I'll just scrub through a little bit and this looks like a good area to start the first cut. So here we'll go to the split tool. We'll click on it and it splits the clips into two. I'm just going to delete this back clip. So with it selected, I'll just click delete and there we go. So now we've already gotten rid of about 16 seconds of video. Perfect. Another 45 seconds of video to go. So from there, we'll just jump around. This looks good. Okay, maybe I want to cut off this portion right here. So we'll split. We'll move ahead a little bit. That looks like a good spot to split as well. And then we'll just delete this in the middle. All right, we're down to two minutes and 17 seconds. So we're almost there. Let's move around again. Maybe we'll split this off here and we're still moving. So let's cut off this bit right here. Perfect. And we'll just drag it all the way up to a minute and 39 seconds and 25 frames. So we'll also just do the cut right there. Bam. So now we have a minute and 39 second video. All we have to do is actually just export this entire timeline here. So to do that, 
In the top right hand corner, we have a little export button. We click on export. We have a new window here. Let's give it a name. I'm just going to call this GS for Gaussian splitting. Export and 4K. I'm just going to save it to my downloads folder. Now, by default, this may be selected as 1080p. We want this to be the highest resolution. Given that we shot this in 4K, we want to export in 4K. From there, all we have to do is click on export. We'll wait for this to export. Shouldn't take too long. Now that the video is saved, we can just go ahead and click on the cancel bottom here and we'll exit out. Now we can actually start generating our 3D model. The first thing you want to do is create a free account with Polycam. In order to do that, it's actually really simple. First, you're going to want to go to poly.cam. You'll click on get started for free, and then you'll just go through the sign up process of creating an account. Now, once you're logged in, you'll probably be on a library page that you can see here. And this is actually where you can go and explore other people's Gaussian splats or 3D models, but we want to go and actually create our own. So to do that on the left hand side, there's a create button. We'll click on the create. And rather than the photogrammetry model, we're actually going to do create a Gaussian splat. We'll click on it. And as you can see, we're limited to a minute and 40 second video. What we'll do is you can either drag and drop your video file here, or we can go and choose from file. There is our GS export 4K. We'll click open. We'll give it a name. So I'm going to just call this GS splat free. And we'll click upload and process. Now there was a little box that did say that it may take 30 to 40 minutes to process. I've actually seen it happen a little bit faster than that. Um, but now all we have to do is just wait for this model to generate. While we wait for our 3D model to load, I do want to let you know about some of the limitations of Gaussian splats compared to traditional 3D models. When it comes to accuracy, photogrammetry still has the upper hand. With the right workflow, using technology like RTK, PPK, and even ground control points, you can achieve survey grade accuracy down to the centimeter. Gaussian splatting isn't built for that level of precision. It's designed for more looking right than measuring right, which means you might get great visual accuracy, but it's not something you can confidently hand off to an engineer designing a bridge. Another big difference is the output. Photogrammetry gives you dense, measurable point clouds that can be fed into CAD, GIS, and BIM software. Gaussian splats don't produce that kind of traditional geometry. Instead, you're dealing with millions of tiny, semi-transparent blobs that visually represent the scene, but aren't true to XYZ points. This means you can't just export them as an LAS, an LAZ, or an XYZ file and expect them to behave like survey grade point cloud. Export flexibility is another sticking point. Photogrammetry can turn out ortho mosaics, DSMs, meshes, contours, and point clouds in just about any standard format. Gaussian splat workflows are still relatively locked to their own formats, often tied to the specific viewer or rendering engine they were processed in. Right now, there is no universal splat file that you can easily drop into an existing mapping or engineering software. Because of all of this, Gaussian splatting doesn't integrate well with industries that require hard, measurable data. In construction, engineering, surveying, or mapping, photogrammetry still wins because it produces deliverables people can measure, analyze, and design from. Gaussian splats shine when you need to tell a visual story, create immersive virtual reality or augmented reality experiences, or wow someone with a cinematic fly-through. But for drafting a topo plan or delivering a survey, photogrammetry is still king here. Now, don't take this as me downplaying Gaussian splatting because it's insanely cool. Once your Gaussian splat has finished processing, you'll actually see a little thumbnail that you can click on. I've actually gone ahead and logged into a different account that I have so that we can take a look at what multiple different projects look like loaded into an account that you may have. So here, if we click on our actual model itself, there is our full Gaussian splat. And as you can see, there's actually a big area that it captured. Now, the reason why we see so much of all these little Gaussians all over the place is because of the tilt of the camera, right? So it saw multiple different angles. If I actually pull up the original video file, we can see where my mouse cursor is, all of the buildings that it sees in the background. And if I scrub through this video, you can see, obviously we have the sky, we've got these background buildings, and as I move around, right, you've got also, you know, this little skyline here off the coast. 
and moving back around, right? We've got more uh, buildings in view as well. So just something to consider when you're looking at the splat itself. Obviously the area that you focused on flying around is gonna have kind of the best result. Um, but as you can see, there is our full 3D model of this college campus. Again, what you can see is we have our full Gaussian splat. We can zoom in, we can move around, right? You can also resize it if you wanted to. You can do some crops. You can even do some measurements. Now with my pro account, um, if I can actually get real measurements from the real world, if I go here, click measure, I can click two points and you know, it's not uh, two scale. It says it's three inches. That's not actually right. I think that's more of like eight feet or something. Or maybe it's actually, that's more than eight, eight feet. I think it's more like uh, 14 feet or so. So if I click on rescale, it's going to rescale this entire model so that now when I start doing measurements, uh, let's say, you know, this paint line right here, right? There we go. 18 and a half feet. So there's actually some pretty cool tools that you can, uh, you can use within polycam. Um, but again, we just generated a 3d model of this campus from a video and it didn't even take that long. It was two minutes and 45 seconds of flying. Obviously we cut it down to a minute and 40 second video and then threw it onto here. And here's this model that, uh, that we have now, something cool that I do want to show you is the difference between Gaussian splats with 3d models versus 3d models from photogrammetry is glass. You can actually get the reflections, um, on the glass as opposed to it just being a weird hole. Now, this is a very reflective glass that I do have on my office building here. Um, but as you can see, it does look pretty cool when comparing it to the 3d model. You can see it doesn't retain, you know, the actual reflection. Cause if I zoom in on the model itself, you can see the reflection actually creates like this dimension, uh, per se, um, on the window. Whereas when we look at the Gaussian splat, it doesn't have that dimension looking feely thing that you have on there. Um, so it's just, I think Gaussian splat is honestly such an incredible tool, especially when it comes to just visualizing whether it's a small data set like this or a large college campus like this. I mean, it's kind of unlimited the possibilities of what you can do with Gaussian splatting. Links to all of the free software and resources will be available down below in the description. I'll also add in a few recommended drones if you don't already have one that you can pick up, throw in the air, gather some video and throw it into Polycam. In addition to that, Polycam did not sponsor this video at all. I actually pay for it out of my own pocket, which actually allows you to do more than just the Gaussian splatting. There's so much more that you can actually explore on Polycam. So be sure to check out a little bit more about what Polycam can do for you. But with that being said, if you guys liked the video and actually helped you out, please be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Does Gaussian splatting seem cool? Is this something that you'd actually use? Let me know down below. With that being said, I'll see you guys the next one.